grab a cup of coffee and start your Sunday with Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life features stories to inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Every Sunday morning at 9 on the Talk of New York, AM 970, The Apple. Visit CYACYL.com. Hi, this is Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Our guest today is author and medical expert Marcel Pick. Marcel is the co-founder of Women to Women and the author of The Core Balance Diet. Her new book, Are You Tired and Wired?, focuses on adrenal dysfunction and the role it plays in our overall health. Marcel is a nurse practitioner, and she served as medical advisor to Healthy Living magazine. Marcel lectures and appears regularly on radio and television, and her radio show, Core Balance for Women's Health, airs weekly on Hay House Radio. Good morning, Marcel. Thanks for joining us today. I'm delighted to be here. Thanks for having me. Marcel, in your new book, which was recently published, Are You Tired and Wired?, you focus on adrenal dysfunction and the havoc that it plays on our health. Before we get into that, can you tell us a little bit about our adrenal glands? Where are they located and, and what is their purpose? Sure. Our adrenal glands are two small, almost walnut-sized glands that sit on top of our kidneys, and they're responsible for helping us deal with day-to-day -day stressors. And if we don't have them, we actually would die without them. We have to have cortisol to, to live our lives. The problem is that too many of us have those poor adrenals having to work overtime because of the tremendous amount of stress that we have in our lives now. The chronic stressors, and, and we'll talk about that. Yeah, and, you know, and when I heard the title of your book, Tired and Wired, it, it sounds like a contradiction, but it really is possible because I am living it personally. I um, know. You know, I and, know. and so many of us are. And so y you've told us what they're supposed to be doing. And when our adrenals aren't functioning properly, there is a long list of, of effects and problems that can happen to us. Can you tell us a little bit about what some of these are? Sure. Um, people that fall asleep in mid-afternoon, people that are being curtailed by feeling too tired to do activities. Uh, the unfortunate part is that people feel really exhausted in the morning. They feel like they have to have caffeine to wake up for the day. They're foggy. Their thinking is really foggy. They become much more susceptible to having allergies and other infections. They are just exhausted. The big thing that I see in my office is that women start gaining weight around their middle and their abdomen, and they can't get the weight off, and they're incredibly frustrated even though they're exercising, and they are changing their diet. They can't get the weight down. So there's many, many symptoms that people have, and they're frustrated because they'll have a lot of blood tests, and that's crucial for anybody. They always need to make sure it's not thyroid or not other uh, serious health complication, anemia, and things like that. And when all those tests are negative, they're frustrated because they they, they're told, well, maybe you're depressed, or perhaps it's just getting older, and I'm here to tell you that that's absolutely not the case, that many women in their 70s, 80s, 90s are feeling fantastic, um, as long as they're taking really good care of themselves. It also causes huge problems with blood sugar dysregulation. It causes hormonal fluctuations, tremendous hormonal fluctuations. It can actually change thyroid function, and GI symptoms can pursue as well and causes immune issues as well. So it's pretty significant if it's an ongoing issue for a long period of time. Women are just absolutely what I call bone-tired and just so tired they can't get out in the bed in the morning. Well, Marcel, as you were just saying, I, I personally have been to the doctor with these types of symptoms and have been told, what do you expect? You're at that age. Right. And when we go, and some of the things that you mentioned, plus others, anxiety, depression, fatigue, foggy brain, that's a big one, mood swings, palpitations, a lot of these things are just written off as menopause or perimenopause or the age. And, and it seems to me that those are more symptoms now of a root cause, adrenal dysfunction. Is that correct in my assessment? Well, no, I think I would agree with you. And the, the problem is that, you know, as a culture, the uh, Endocrine Society came out with a positions paper saying that there's no such thing as adrenal dysfunction or adrenal fatigue. And I think we, we do have a little bit of a problem with naming it. And I therefore called it adrenal dysfunction because it is really hyper or hypo production of cortisol. 
And we have enough science to support the notion that when that goes on for too long, there are significant detrimental effects to the, to the body, including things like depression, anxiety, um, heart palpitations. And what's interesting is that we do know that if somebody has a tremendous amount of stress that then causes feedback to the adrenals, that in perimenopause, it causes even larger shifts in the hormones and therefore more symptoms. So when I see someone in perimenopause, and that can be up to 10 years before menopause, I will always look at adrenal function and then make changes accordingly. And what they'll find many times is those symptoms that they had abate. Now, is there a test or, or how do we diagnose this? In your book, I took, and there are wonderful tests throughout this book, and I recommend that everyone get a copy of the book, Are You Tired or Wired? And I did take one of the tests to identify symptoms, and I have to tell you, I didn't score very well. So, I know. Um, and again, it's all too common. So what happens? Is there a test that we can have? Is there a blood there work? There is actually a test, and it's actually the gold standard that we use in medicine. It's a saliva profile looking at cortisol levels, um, you know, at, at 7 in the morning, noon, afternoon, and evening. Now, this is not for people that were suspicious that they can, I mean, they can barely get out of bed and they can't stand up. That's for somebody who would need to be evaluated for, you know, Addison's disease or Cushing syndrome, which is extremely high levels. The good news is it's very rare in our culture. So I'm not talking about those people, but I'm talking about people that are kind of like you and me and everybody else. We can do a saliva profile. So we actually test them at 7 in the morning, noon, 4 in the afternoon, and around 10 at night. And then we look at those levels because cortisol is what we call um, a circadian. So it's very high normally in the morning and low at night, the opposite of melatonin. Melatonin gets high at night and low in the morning. And we want to see those values because if it's high, you have energy when you get up. You're able to think more clearly. You don't have those hormones that are, that are really kind of in, in huge chaos. And then you're able to have more stable moods throughout your menstrual cycle or when you're going into menopause. So it's crucial that those numbers be normal. And we can see variations on that theme as people become more and more stressed and the adrenals become more and more what I call compromised. And that's why it's important because I know women who have told me they've been tested hormonally and they'll say, well, I had a blood test. And that is not a very good indicator, as you're saying. They need to have a profile taken over, I believe it's 30 days. And it's a certain... Well, everybody's different. I don't always do a hormonal panel uh, for hormones. Adrenal test, I just do once. Okay. Generally on a day that they're stressed. And then a hormone panel... I might get two snapshots around the time, you know, of the beginning, what we call um, the follicular phase of their cycle, and then I might get another one in their luteal phase. Because the thing is, our hormones fluctuate so much, they go up and down. I just want a bird's eye view about what's going on. What are the tendencies? What are the trends in hormones that are happening? And if I can't get a big enough picture, then I will do a 30-day hormonal evaluation. Okay, so to test for adrenal dysfunction, first you have a little bit of trial and error where you rule out major yeah, types of conditions. Work. You know, I might exactly. do somebody, test them for Addison's or Cushing's or refer them for an endocrine evaluation. But if all the tests are essentially negative and then I've got them having weight gain, they're depressed, they're having mood swings, they've had huge amounts of stress or they're, you know, they're, they're mothers, new time mothers that are working and having a relationship and trying to juggle children and have a very, you know, demanding job, I'm going to always be suspicious of adrenals because our adrenals are meant to have balance. And we have the other, which is relaxation, and we don't do that often enough. And Marcel, that's because also you're more progressive thinking in your medical practice. What happens to a woman who goes to a doctor and is not getting the type of testing that she needs done? What should she tell this doctor? Um, What she should tell this doctor is, I am not, you know, it's not just because I'm middle-aged or it's not just, I'm not depressed and advocate for herself. And if that still doesn't work, then they may want to find what I call an integrated practitioner or what I am, which is a functional medicine, you know, practitioner, to have somebody really listen to their symptoms. You know, we need to have people that are listening to us because women do know their bodies. 
And if it's not working in the way that it did, something's intervening in a way that's preventing it from doing so. And Marcel, to this point, we've been speaking about women, but does adrenal dysfunction it does. for men as well? It does. It does. Um, and th- the truth is that many of us are burning the candle on both ends, especially as we've had this huge change in our technological system. We are now getting up looking on the computer. We're then taking the kids or we're doing our job or we're, you know, um, entering menopause or the men are kind of busy doing many things. They then are doing their work. Then they come home. They're still on the computer or their iPad or their iPhone or their BlackBerry. We don't ever shut off. And, you know, 150 years ago, we had this quiet time at night. It got dark. We didn't really have electricity. We might have a candle. But it's very relaxing. Now we have everything that keeps us alert and awake, and it's not in harmony with the physiology of our body. Now, that doesn't mean we have to go back 150 years. It just means that we do need to be mindful. We need balance. We need to go outside. We need to breathe. We need to do types of exercise. We need to be mindful of the quality of the food that we're eating. All those things can help return us to a sense of balance so that we don't feel like we're, you know, 45, 50, 65 and deplete. Marcel, a few minutes ago I mentioned that I took one of your tests and that I didn't score very well. You break it down into three degrees of adrenal dysfunction, mild, moderate, and severe. What are the differences between these degrees? Well, I also categorize people in three categories so that you can be something what I call um, a racehorse, which is somebody that's racing all the time that just can't those are the people oftentimes that they'll describe themselves as wired and tired they can't sleep they're always on the go they can't stop if they do stop it's like uh uh-oh you know they won't wake up then we have the people that get up and they are exhausted in the morning they have to push the snooze button or they need a couple of cups of coffee to get going and then by you know the afternoon and evening they've got their stripe but then they have trouble either falling asleep or they go to sleep fine but they wake up and they can't get back to sleep And then we have those that are called a flatliner that are just exhausted all day long. And, of course, within those categories, we have degrees, which is the mild, which is just, you know, a little bit of a racehorse, but it's not really interfering in their life. Then the mild, it's starting to be a problem. And then we have the severe that's like, "Uh uh-oh, I'm really in big trouble here. So each of those categories has all of those going on. And it depends on how long you've been pushing yourself or how long you've been ignoring the symptoms as to where you are along that continuum. And I have a feeling that a lot of women like me are going to end up in the severe side. So when you say, "Uh uh-oh, I'm in trouble now, what do you mean by that? What I mean is that it's time to do something about it. You know, I've been seeing patients for, you know, almost 30 years and Many times they put off seeing somebody themselves because they're taking care of everybody else's needs or their work is too busy or, you know, maybe later or sometime I will but not now. And we have to pay attention because the further down the road we are, it, it certainly is reversible, but it just takes a lot more effort. And people feel sick and they don't feel well. And because it can affect the body in such a pronounced way, it affects the immune system, it increases autoimmune disorders, those things can have health implications. So it's better to do it sooner than later. Marcel, we have to take a short break for our sponsors. I'm Joan Herman. This is Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. We'll be right back. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life now has a monthly free digital magazine that can be mailed to your inbox or read online at cyacyl.com. Each month, nationally recognized leaders in their fields, such as Joel Osteen, Sean T., Tanya Brown, Ed and Deb Shapiro, Food Network's Robert Irvine, plus many others, provide the tools that you need to inspire and motivate you. We believe in a holistic approach to life, incorporating mind, body, and spirit. As philosopher Francis Bacon said, knowledge is power. Take the wisdom provided in the publication and apply it to your everyday life. Visit CYACYL.com for more information or to begin your free subscription. That's CYACYL.com. Welcome back. I'm Joan Herman, and our guest today is author and medical expert Marcel Pick. Marcel is the co-founder of Women to Women and the author of The Core Balance Diet, Her new book, Are You Tired and Wired?, focuses on adrenal dysfunction and the role it plays in our overall health. Marcel's radio show, Core Balance for Women's Health, airs weekly on Hay House Radio. Marcel, before break, we were talking about adrenal dysfunction, and what I'd like to discuss now is how we can treat and reverse this condition, what we need to do in order to restore healthy adrenal function. Sure. Well, the first thing that I recommend is that people be mindful that they need to have a diet that really supports good nutrition. 
So staying away from sugar, artificial colors, sweeteners, dyes, and they decrease carbohydrates as much as possible. So they do breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, and dinner. And in the book, what I did was try to um, have recipes in there that are 30 minutes or less to prepare, that are family-friendly. And, and if I could delicious. interrupt for a moment, they, they really do sound delicious. They hardly seem like any type of a stringent diet. So yeah. I just wanted to say that right there. Yeah, well, we try very hard to do that because I think a lot of women are feeling like, you know, one more diet to go on. Are you kidding? This, for me, is more of a lifestyle change, that you're trying to change the way your body responds to stress. And in addition to that, it's finding ways that you can have relaxation every single day. It might just be that one thing that you start with is just breathing, that you have signs on your phone to just take a deep breath a couple of times a day. It might mean that you go out with girlfriends twice a week. It might mean that you turn your computers and everything electronic off. I call it an electronic Sabbath twice a week. So that when you come home, you truly are home, that you change your clothes, so you change out of the work environment and get into clothes. Maybe it's taking a bath. Maybe it's writing in a journal. But it's doing something every single day that's consciously supporting adrenals and using nutrients because some people are so tired that we need to add nutrients in to really help that adaptogenic response of the body, depending upon whether you're the racehorse, the workhorse, or the flatliner. Those supplements are going to be different. And then taking a really good quality multivitamin with calcium, magnesium, fish oil, and uh, the multi in it on a daily basis, again, to support the physiology of the body as you begin to make the shifts that are lifestyle-oriented to help decrease that stress. Marcel, in your book, you talk about the importance of organic foods. Why are they so important to us? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, the unfortunate part is that we now are finding that when foods are sprayed with pesticides, they don't have many of the antioxidants in there. For example, if you have an organic plant that's growing, you'll see sometimes it has little holes in it and from different kinds of um, bugs that are in the environment that are naturally occurring. And what happens is the plant in response to that has to kind of enforce its own antioxidants so that it can stay strong. And if you don't have that in a plant and it's sprayed, you're not getting the benefit of the antioxidants. That's one part. The other part is that when the soil is deplete and we use fertilizers to make that plant grow, again, we've got the same issue is that we're forcing it to grow big without the foundation in the soil of nutrients to support the physiology of that plant. So we want to be avoiding pesticides as much as possible. We want to have the nutrients in that plant as much as possible. Therefore, we want to do organic as much as we can uh, to really help with that. Marcel, do you think that's why our grandmothers were so so much healthier and different than what we have? I mean, I had an Italian grandmother who lived to be 93, and if it grew, she cooked it and ate it. And, and I'm Sure, it was organic food because they didn't have the pesticides back then. And do you think that that made a difference in that generation versus what we're experiencing now? Yes, I do. (laughs) I really do. (laughs) Because our our grandmothers were so conscientious about eating, they had very minimal artificial colors, sweeteners, and dyes. We uh, find many of them. I mean, my aunt is 92, her sister's 90, and my father's 86 and still works in a part-time practice. So, yes, they are very, very different. They don't eat many artificial colors, sweeteners, and dyes. We have a problem in our culture now of more chronic disease than we've ever had before. So I think that we need to be aware that the chronic diseases that we have are um, a significant issue that also are, are plagued by the stress that we have in our culture in addition to many, many, many artificials and also environmental toxins. You know, if you stop and think about it, it really is so simple, and it makes so much sense. Yeah. Marissa, what is your 90-10 rule? What I have people do is to be 90% of the time really conscientious about what they're eating and 10% of the time they eat what they want. So if you're going to go and you have a special occasion, yes, you do have that birthday cake or you do have something. The only exception for me sometimes will be gluten for people because they are sometimes that can set people back a bit. So for some people, if they're really gluten sensitive, I might say, you know what, go make a gluten-free cake and put some wonderful cream cheese icing on it. And that will then kind of take up the space for the wonderful dessert they wanted to have. Marcel, 
women today uh, and men as well, we are so consciously trying to lose weight and we're trying every fad diet imaginable. If we just make these lifestyle changes and follow your recommendations for healthier living, adrenal function, will we lose weight? Will we achieve those goals as well? Generally, that is the case. Uh, I have um, a couple of people that were actually Pilates instructors and they had tremendous amount of adrenal fatigue. They exercised daily, they changed their diet, they decreased their calories, and nothing happened. As soon as they addressed the adrenal issues, their weight came down and was normalized. So yes, it can make a big difference. Because of the elimination of the cortisol. Exactly. Okay, now you also say that sleep is very important for adrenal dysfunction. Why is that and what do you recommend? Sleep is crucial. If we have a culture that's really not sleeping enough, they're sleeping generally about a five to six hours. And we know now from the research that the time that our body is detoxifying the most is at night. It's also restorative for the physiology and our emotional well-being. We know that we need to be getting between seven and eight hours of sleep a night on a regular basis to help also with weight loss. We've done enough studies to show that it makes a difference. So for detoxification, for building and setting down healthy bone for our emotions and for our weight, we need to be getting more sleep. It's crucial for our well-being. And you recommend about seven hours a night minimum? We do, seven to eight hours. And this whole notion of, well, I'll catch up on the weekend doesn't work. We've done enough studies to show that it's not the case. We need to be getting consistent, regular sleep for you know, seven plus hours a night. Marcel, in the past few weeks on Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, we've talked about the plasticity of the brain and that our brains are designed to change. Mm -hmm. Why is this so important to our adrenal health? When we looked, uh, the reason I actually wrote this book is that I was intrigued by the number of people that I recommended lifestyle changes, and they did them, they felt much better, and then they came back to see me six months later or a year later with the same issues. If we don't change our attitude about how stressed out we are, if we don't change the way we behave, if we're perfectionists or type A's, if we don't understand why we're behaving the way that we are, if we don't understand some of the hurts from our own personal story, we continue to do the same behavior. So we need to change our mind, we need to change our thinking, we need to look at our emotional, what I call stories, to be able to make changes because the brain can accommodate that if we allow it to. Now the piece that's so important to understand is that if we have emotional stories or if we have any stressors, let me say that, mm -hmm. The two parts of the brain it is affected by is the corneal cortex, which is the frontal part of the brain, the rational part of the brain, and the amygdala, which is the primitive emotional part of the brain. The message goes from the amygdala, the primitive part of the brain, to the adrenals twice as fast as the rational part. So before we even know it, we're already in response mode to a situation that may be a pain that we had from our past, it may be somebody's reaction to us, it may be a response, it may be, oh, I've got to show this person how good I am, it might be, I've got to do a better job at work. That is an automatic response. If we don't work with our brain and ourselves to know, you know what, I can do this differently, I don't have to respond in that way anymore, our adrenals are going to be affected. Because our brain is so, as you described, able to change, we need to harness that and do something with that data and change. And that's what we say here, change your attitude, change your life. Absolutely. Marcel, where can our listeners go to get more information about you and your There's work? a couple of places. I have a website, um, mar uh, womentowomen.com, and I'll be launching my own website, marcelpick.com. There is information about my clinic, Women to Women, there as well, because we have an in-house clinic. And then they have the two books, The Core Balance uh, Diet, which was uh, published two years ago, and then the one that came out recently, Tired and Are You Tired and Wired? And as always, our listeners can get more information about Marcel on our website, which is CYACYL.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on our site, read our new digital magazine, listen to past shows as podcasts, and sign up for our mailing list. Very quickly, in 30 seconds, if there's one thing that you want people to walk away with from this interview, what would that be? It would be to have the understanding that they are able to change themselves dramatically and they can change their lives. They don't have to stay this way for the rest of their lives. They can feel better. Our guest today is Marcel Pick, author and medical expert. Marcel is the co-founder of Women to Women and the author of The Core Balance Diet, 
Her new book, Are You Tired and Wired?, focuses on adrenal dysfunction and the role it plays in our overall health. I highly recommend everyone get a copy of this book. It is wonderful. There's great information. There are tests that you can take to evaluate yourself. Marcel, again, thank you, and I look forward to having the opportunity to talk to you again. Absolutely. I'll be delighted to do it. Thanks so much. This is Joan Herman, and this is Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Thanks for tuning in.